Hi friends! This week I'm going to do some more Dollar Tree makeovers. I like the last ones I did so much that I just wanted to do it again. So let's just get into it. The first thing I'm going to be working on is this mirror. Cute. Very cute. I'm going to start by taking off this stupid sticker. Maybe. I'm trying not to chip my nail polish by using literally anything else I can find to peel this. But wow, is this painful to watch. Next, I'm sanding this, just enough to rough up the shiny surface and help the paint stick a little bit better. After wiping it off with a damp paper towel, we're ready for some paint. Now, when I said we're ready for paint, what I meant was gesso. The gesso really highlights the area that I gouged out when I was trying to scrape off that sticker. Take that spotlight, honey. After the gesso dried, it was time to sketch my design. I wanted to do a cute little animal that I haven't done in a while. So somehow I settled on a fox. He's very excited. He's standing up. He's begging for a hug. He's also too far to the left. Rather than redraw this whole thing, I decided to just fill the space with something. I hate it. No, really, I actually hate it. It's not even a funny pun, but I can't think of anything better and I don't hate it quite enough to redo it. Stay Foxy can stay. Ew. I don't even like saying it. Before breaking out the paint, I did try to lighten the pencil lines a bit so they wouldn't be so hard to go over. I'm going with this nice light blue for the background because I wanted something that would complement the orange of the fox nicely. And blue is the complementary color to orange, or orange is the complementary color to blue. I don't know if it matters. All I know is that they complement each other. They get along. They're buddies. I also painted the other side, but I'm not going to keep showing you that because it's boring. But just know that it exists and I took care of it. For the fox, I'm going to use Posca's because he has a lot of little detailed areas and I just really love my Posca's anyway. I actually bought this whole set of these other paint markers to try and I still keep going back to my Posca's. I think it's because I'm so familiar with them and I know exactly what color I want. But look at all these beauties just sitting here all pristine, waiting for their chance to shine. After outlining my little buddy, I did still paint on the little saying, but I tried to cuten up the font a little bit and add some shadows. I only like 90% hate it now. I filled in the background around the edges, let it dry completely for a few days, and then gave the whole thing about four coats of satin varnish. And here it is done. I still hate the words on there, but I do think that because the fox is so bright, my eyes are more drawn to him and not as much the stupid pun. I love the fox. He's so cute. I just want to give him a big squishy hug. The next item I'm going to make over is this popcorn container. It's made out of a pretty smooth plastic, and this red paint is sort of raised a bit, so I'm going to sand this also. I really need to get more assertive with my sanding. Why are my fingers up like that? This isn't high tea. After sanding, I gave the bucket a little bath, and it's on to gesso. After a couple of coats of that, we're ready for a sketch. I went back and forth on ideas for this. At first, I wanted to use this as a sort of vase to hold flowers, and I thought it would be really cool to paint it like a lava lamp. And I'm not sure if you know this, but lava lamps are tapered in like the exact opposite direction of this. So I was going to try an optical illusion, but I wasn't sure how to even go about that. So I just completely changed ideas and went with a UFO in the desert. This was still a little bit of a pain to wrap around the edges, so I had to use a flexible straight edge also known as a piece of paper, to make sure the angle stayed consistent. For the background, I'm going with a shadowy desert landscape in dark purples and blues. For the UFO's abduction ray, its sucky-uppy beam thing, I decided I wanted to go with a full neon rainbow. I love me some pastels but I've been really gravitating towards neon lately. Of course, I didn't have neon markers in every color, so technically green, blue, and purple are just the brightest ones I had. 
The spaceship itself is going to be silver, but you can't actually see that. You'd think by now I'd be better at this filming thing. Let's add a few coats and clean everything up, and then do it all over again on the next side. Next, I added in a few little details to try and make this a little less boring. Some lights on the ship, some desert cactus, and these <laughs> weed things. After that, it's still looking kind of lacking, so I added some stars in the sky. I'm not 100% sold on these because they're so bright white, and the rest of the landscape is kind of dark, but I didn't hate them enough to paint over them. Finally, I added a little human getting sucked up in the beam. Then I sealed everything in with satin varnish. This one was kind of a simple quick one. I mean, quick to watch, not quick to paint because everything took like seven coats. And I can see a lot of things I would change, like maybe do something with that blank blue stripe at the bottom. But ultimately, I still really like it. So the last item I'm going to give a makeover to is this shark squishy. I've never had the burning desire to decorate a squishy before. I like watching squishy makeovers and I appreciate how customizable they are, but I just have never felt the itch to do it myself. But I saw this shark squishy and I couldn't pass it up. I'm either going to absolutely love this or absolutely hate it. So let's cut the tag off and take a look at this guy. He's got some pretty obvious seams on the side and I can already see cracks when I squish him. The biggest problem is that his tail is wrong. He has a dolphin tail. Shark tails are vertical. So I'm going to cut it off and fix it. Now, I felt really confident doing this. I've seen every Mariah Elizabeth video. It's like when you watch too many doctor shows so you're positive you can do a heart transplant. I can totally do this. So I busted out my fabric fusion. I have no idea how old this bottle is. I'm a hoarder who never gets rid of supplies in case I might need them, so who knows when I last used this. But I'm pretty sure it's not supposed to be this liquidy. Despite that, and my atrocious rubber band job, it worked. But see this one little section that's not glued? I'm a perfectionist, so I'm gonna fix that. Except I made it worse. I tried to glue this back together off camera one more time with that old glue before I gave up and used a new-ish bottle. At least it's a normal gluey consistency. Finally, it's stuck on pretty good and I can move on. These seams seemed really aggressive. Seams, seemed, seemed, seemed. I didn't like these seams, so I tried to cut them off. Normal size scissors weren't getting there, which should have been a clue. But instead, I forged it on with some tiny little nail scissors. I also trimmed up along where the tail was glued to try and make the connection a little more even. From my vast viewing experience, I know you need to seal in any rips, tears, holes, and seams with slick paint. I'm using blue because I somehow hoarded two giant bottles of it. However, I don't really have enough experience with slick paint to be able to anticipate how flat or lumpy it will dry. I was afraid if I just glopped this on, it would be super clumpy, so I'm trying to feather out the edges with a paintbrush. I feel like this was the wrong tactic though, because this took so many layers and it still looks lumpy. Someone please explain this to me like I'm five. How do people do this and make it look good? For the white base coat, I know Mariah uses a mixture of matte and slick paint, but I don't know the ratio, so I just went with half and half. I feel like that's also wrong though, because I don't remember the paint looking so see-through. But I just kept plowing on and used extra layers to hopefully smooth out some of the lumpy areas. After, no lie, like seven coats, I sketched on a design. The exact same design as before. For this paint job, we're going with a purple theme. And this shark is going to be a shark lady, with a light purple on her belly and a dark purple on top. Again, I just guessed with the ratio of slick to matte paint. And I had to keep messing with the color of the paint because it just wasn't mixing the way that I'm used to. If this was a heart transplant, I've removed a lung instead of the bad heart 
drop the good heart on the floor, and sewn the patient up with a spaghetti needle. After days of painting on coat after coat, I finally moved on to her mouth. Originally, her mouth was white inside, which was kind of weird, but I'm going to go with red. To hopefully save myself some time, I'm trying this brush on paint instead. It still took like five coats, but even when I really glopped it on, it dried flat. So the jury's still out on this one. Last, I painted in her gills, thought they were too thick and had to go back over them, gave her some strangely close set eyes, and some crooked nostrils. For some finishing touches, she got eyelashes, a very simple little bow, and highlights in her eyes. And she's done. This is probably the simplest squishy makeover in existence, but she took me so long. She's still got really obvious surgery scars, and her face is a little derpy, but I don't hate her at all. Maybe it's because I toiled so hard over her, but she really has a place in my heart. That's all for this week. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.